You're here with Cobra Fitness Club. We're in the beautiful parts of downtown LA. And uh, I'm gonna take you for a run. I love being outside. Makes working out so much more fun. That t-shirt is so good. Camiseta. Bien. Health Goth, it's, it's a counterculture community. It's not what you would normally see with the fitness bros. It's about, you know, the underground. Imagine going into a, a, a fitness studio filled with people dressed in black, working out and sweating on each other, listening to like dark ass music. Hashtag season two, a discussion on internet music phenomenon and digital culture. Get your sweatpants ready, because in this episode, we're working out what it means to be a health goth with founders of the movement, Mike Gravorek, Chris Contino and Jeremy Scott, as well as artists and influencers Chad Fergasted, Ari Levitin and Jeremy Dawson, Keaton Kessler, Johnny Love slash Deathfist, magazine editor, Lynette Nylander, and Mark Hunter. Get all of that? Good. Let's feel the burn, bro. Health Goth is like rendered, like 3D, kind of hyper clean environments. We don't want to associate any music with it. And honestly, we wouldn't want any music to try and associate themselves with us, because what if we think that music sucks? Well, health goth is uh, it's kind of a, a complicated question to answer. You know, there's an aesthetic behind it. Visually, a lot of the imagery is a lot of, like, chav culture. There's a lot of, like, track suits and trainers. And there's a fascination with technology. Which... And the fitness uh, aspect, it's kind of like the outcast table in high school for gyms. Health goth is an epic fitness movement about wearing black, lifting weights, going hard at the gym. It's about, you know, the underground, the people that you know, don't get all the attention at the gym. I don't want to go to the gym and get made fun of by you, bro, and your garbage music. That will, that's the whole point of it. I guess, you know, health health is really about like still being better than everybody else. Like, you want to look better than everybody else, you're going to be stronger than everybody else, and you still want to have more fun than everybody else. Well, it's something that started more as like a noun, and I guess it's more turned into sort of an adjective. Health goth noun. An aesthetic revolving around biotechnology, monochrome sportswear, fetish culture, extreme cleanliness and rendered environments. Adjective. High tech. So you can be health goth rather than I think necessarily a lot of people knowing what health goth is. This interview is kind of making me realize that I'm more a part of more a part of the movement than I even thought. You could consider health goth to be a ramped up version of just sportswear advertisements. It's actually pretty hard to describe. It's like a blend of like Tumblr trends with like classic club kid, like raver vibes. And then we were just basically kind of recontextualizing like kind of normal sportswear stuff into our own little world. Wearing all black, going to the gym, sort of in this spooky kind of way, it's it's next level, and it, it'll uh, draw attention. It made me feel like there's like a new and exciting reason to like get fit and get healthy. It was finally an outlet for uh, people like us to to be a part of the alternative side of fitness. Yeah, we wanted to get away from the oppressive light of, of mainstream culture. The, seeing the word health goth struck something in people that were on either end of the spectrum in terms of their interest. The, the memes on the internet and this kind of culture of like dead and fitness coming together was like quite unique and quite intriguing. And when I found out Johnny was behind it, I was like, of course, this makes sense. I mean, when I first saw it, it was just like a hashtag. So when people got mad at me for trying to like say that it was something else, I didn't really get mad. I was like, well, now I'm gonna like keep going with this. 
I know it was a very small movement, one or two people, and in fact, I believe there was some sort of disagreement over who started House Glow. And getting turf war or whatever, its original inception was Mike's vision of it, and it had nothing to do with going to the gym. I kind of knew it was Mike right away by just the art style he was doing. It was kind of just a lot of like cut and paste, kind of basic Photoshop style. This yeah. makes sense. And I mean, we, whenever we were thinking health about health, like, we were thinking of like sterile environments, uh, biomechanics, transhumanism. And to, and to say that like health, to say that like health is just gym stuff, I mean, that's just like, you're oversimplifying it so much. And like cleanliness that, is like an obsession or like a fetish, you know, that that's, you know. Yeah, we were taking that aspect of the health. It just wasn't simply about, like, you know, I go to the gym. And a lot of people, you know, when they get to a certain age after partying for years, start worrying about their mortality and their health. And, you know, people can really, I feel like people can relate more to that than some kind of like art school thesis about biomechanical this, that, and the other. The place the health got started was with us because we thought of the name, started the page, curated the idea, and put in all the work to make it actually become a thing. I feel like if I had never stepped in and done this stuff, that helicopter would have ended. It's what we needed. You know, we needed it's like the beginning of, of an underground again. Is it a lifestyle? It kind of is a lifestyle. Like like I was saying, you can't like not commit to it. I don't personally identify with health goth, but I really respect it. It is a fad for you, but it's not for us. I mean, everyone always is gonna criticize, is this a trend, is this for real, like, is this a joke? You know, g dressing the part is one thing, but then doing the fitness is another. Uh, everybody needs a different inspiration and motivation for fitness. So if health goth can be there for you, like, embrace it. Um, I think it's typical for subcultures to mutate. If you look throughout time, that's how subcultures have, have quite organically grown. I think it's fine if something starts online, but I personally like to see it flourish into something that becomes an in real life experience. Because of the way that it's immediately sort of categorized and pejoratively termed like, you know, just a fad or stupid, it's a it's gonna be gone in six months or whatever. Things become a fad because basic people get a hold of it and run with it for a while. And then like McDonald's and everything else, you get tired of it, you shit it out and you move on. I think a lot of the people making the calls on the trends in the sub subcultures, they are the critics, the people that are absorbing this information and digesting it faster than almost anyone. I think by fashion's very nature, it's cyclical. It's in vogue one minute and the next it's kind of chip shop paper. You know, health goth is, you know, something that was super impactful. You know, it's just the nature of fashion. It's what makes it exciting. It's what makes me love it. A lot of like the like brand like fetishism stuff actually came more from our friends who were like real like shoe freaks. I mean, what's that thing? It's called like a, a cocktail where you actually like sit in a tub in full dress and you actually have like all of your shoes like floating around in the tub amongst you. There are so many videos of people that dress in this style that we're talking about isn't completely like covering themselves in water or, or mud. mud and people are just getting off on like seeing like TNs in this environment. Most people just see these like Nike ads and they're like yeah that looks great but we were like really like taking like a critical eye to that stuff and trying to pull new content. A lot of it, like I said, borrowed from the chef culture and wearing tracksuits and trainers, which is a big, big part of like visually of grime culture. Like those like Nike boys or whatever, yeah. like those like street London guys that only wear like Air Max. I think we can have something like grime, which to me feels what like one of the most legitimate and last subcultures up against something like health goth. The role that music plays in health goth, uh, I mean. It's a very, very tricky yeah. subject. And we kind of noticed that whenever you typically pair a style with a sound, uh, a lot of people cannot get past that. Musically, Health Goth, it's sort of curated by Johnny's tastes. 
because he'll put out playlists and, and suggest music that you should listen to. The, the idea was twofold, is to have a music genre associated with the tag and also to kind of give people stuff to listen to when they work out. You wouldn't say that like there's a sound. I wouldn't say that, you know, we would call a music Hellcop. I mean, like there's a lot of like kind of fantastical sci-fi elements in Hellcop. If you look at a Hellcop image, you, if you were to hear, you know, like very just heavy drums. Sparse melodies. I think the future is extra dark for health goth. I mean, I don't really blame people for thinking that that health goth might just be like gone in the wind type thing. I mean, for all I know, there just could be no future. I mean, some people would just probably say it's already done now. How was health, health goth is it's not going away anytime soon. A lot of people are really excited about going to official health goth personal training. Just to even have the experience that we've had creating health goth and like being part of something that's considered viral and seeing it grow like that and knowing that you were kind of involved, it's pretty insane. kind of a phenomenon that you witness happen in reality, but it doesn't really happen to that many people. So to be part of that, it's just kind of like, you know, wow. I'm getting there. I want to be like you. It's not like this is like PC music or, or trap. Yeah, like, like trap's going to go away. EDM's going to go away. Why would fitness for people who are in a dark subculture go away?